This is incredibly important. Most people don't even realize how important it is. Thanks for visiting our sawmill. I am Robert Milton. This is Hobby Hardwood, and hopefully this is your favorite YouTube sawing channel. If it's not, well, it should be. This is incredibly important. Most people don't even realize how important it is. It has to do with your drive belt. Flaming box elder, type of maple. The softest of the soft maples. About three different families of maples. Hard maple, soft maple, which is actually medium hard. And the ultra soft maple, which is box elder. Some of you may have noticed, some of you safety conscious people out there in video land, may have noticed that I have something missing from my sawmill called a drive belt safety cover. So some of you may wonder why I have removed this guard or the shield. Well, there is, a, there is a reason for it. It gives me access to see my drive belt. It gives me access to see my tickers. This guy extremely important but some of the mills did not come with those um, this is very important because your drive shaft on your motor is cantilevered out you can tell right i mean from there to there to there and typically this is the part that's hooked up to the transmission it's going to have a support bearing on a lot of sawmills this drive shaft is not supported so if you over tension your drive belt right there you're putting a huge cantilever load on your drive shaft that's being picked up by your sawmill engine bearings. And that has led to more than one broken drive shaft. So some mills, like this particular wood miser, actually has a bearing support installed on it. That's real, that's that little guy right there. And that helps take the load off the drive belt from the drive belt to the shaft. Now you still don't want to tighten it down too much. There's a bunch of reasons for that. But let's just say that you do not have a belt tensioning gauge. And if you don't, you need to get one. I'll show you how that works in a minute. If you don't have one, your typical way to check a belt is to go up there and thump on it. Now this one's loose, obviously, and you go, yeah, that feels about right. And you just go about your business. That's not how you check a main drive belt on a sawmill. These things are critical to sawmill performance. I cannot overstate how important your drive belt tension is, especially if you have a powered feed on your mill. Let me, let me explain the scenario. So you're running your mill, this thing, this belt is hooked up to a bunch of stuff that's hooked up to your, your band. That's pretty, come on now, stay open. Come on, there we go. So this belt, seriously, Heck, gummit. You know, some things just don't like to play nice. I can fix that pretty easy. I got my doohickey right here. And now we got it. All right. Back to what I was explaining. This drive belt comes off your motor. The power goes through the belt. Goes to whatever configuration you have, LT40s, LT70s, everything has a different configuration. 
and then goes to your saw blade. So what happens if your band is too tight? Well, we already explained that. It's not a real big deal. You just simply break the crankshaft on your $6,000 or $7,000 motor. If it's a diesel, it's $10,000. And that $10 blade tension tool is gonna seem pretty important at that point. So, assuming you're not tensioning it too tight, then you may be tensioning it too loose. Well, okay, what's, what's the big deal? It may slip a little bit. You may see some smoke, which is never a good thing. These dry belts, by the way, are several hundred dollars. I mean, this is a triple ribbed little beastie. Um, I mean, we're talking some money. So if this dry belt slips and you start to see smoke off of it, which is never a good thing, you're destroying your dry belt. Now, one of the most insidious, yes, I'm from the South and I do know that word. It is a big word. One of the most insidious issues that you can have with your loose dry belt is one that's only not noticeably loose. You'll be hogging a hunk of wood. Your blade will be grabbing a little too much. Your drive belt being a little loose is gonna slip on the drive pulley or up here, at the, up here at the engine. Typically it's gonna be on the small pulley, so it's gonna slip right here. And what that means then is number one, you're not using the full horsepower of your engine, which is why did you buy a big engine if you're not using it? But what also happens is as your band speed slows down, that means you can't cut as fast. It means that you need to slow down your feed rate. The problem is if you don't notice that your band is slowing down, you're going to keep feeding at the same rate, which means you're feeding now too fast for your band speed and you will start cutting ugly wood. It's gonna wave, it's gonna dip, it's gonna dive, and you're gonna have trouble figuring it out because you won't hear the engine bog down, you may not even hear the engine change RPM. You probably won't hear that the band is changing speed, but what you will find out is when you pull that board back, it's gonna look like the ocean. And you'll go, oh, my band is dull, or my blade guide rollers are out of adjustment, or something. And you're gonna put a new one on there, and you're gonna be sawing, and you're gonna be careful, and you're gonna be doing your thing, and the board's gonna be coming out flat. And then you start to feel a little sporty. You start pushing the mill a little bit and your dry belt starts slipping. Your band stays, your band slows down and you don't know it. Your feed rate stays the same because you're pushing it and now you're getting waves. Incredibly important to have your dry belt adjusted not too loose and not too tight. So, the way you do that is you use a drive belt tensioning tool. Let me go get it. So let's see, we will go here to the drawer marked measuring. And I have two of them. This little wondrous modern miracle of 18th century engineering is the difference between you cutting flat wood, you cutting straight wood, <laughs> you breaking the crankshaft of your engine or you burning up your multi hundred dollar drive belt it's important enough for me to have two of them it's probably important enough for you to have one of them oh, all wood misers <laughs> and most other sawmills have a way to engage the band tighten it up without actually starting the sawmill so with the saw not running you can typically tension the band fairly easy on mine I just do a band engage and it will tighten up the main drive belt no problem we got it tensioned up now the big question is is this too tight or is that too loose let's see what else do I have very convenient look I've got not one two straight edges this is aluminum if you're in Britain it's called aluminium i always like that i've got an aluminium straight edge 
And you put your straight edge from here to there as much as possible. Because what we're trying to do is deflect the belt. Take our handy dandy gauge. It's got this little plunger. It's listed in pounds of force on this side. So as this gets pushed in, once it gets to there, that's five pounds of force, 10 pounds of force, once it hits that little yellow line. Uh, what you really want to do is take this broken O-ring that I need to replace. When you push it in a certain amount, that's going to be in the center of your drive belt, that's going to be equivalent to how much tension. And that little O-ring is going to stop right where you need it to be. In my case, I've got it marked with a white Sharpie right here. And I have the deflection that the belt should move marked right here. Come in here, snake my hand in here. There we go. Get right in the center of the center of the drive belt. Get this perpendicular. It's going to be hard to see. And what I'm trying to do is push the belt down. See how I'm pushing down until it lines up with that white groove. When I come back, I want my little O ring to be sitting right on that white mark. This, this slightly under 15 pounds. So let's check it again. Straight down, keep going, keep going. So actually I can get a pretty good shot right now. So you can see the deflection there and you can see the O-ring. See how that works, you push it down. And once it gets to the right spot, it's gonna kind of grab and come up. But either way, so my drive belt is tensioned correctly. Loosen that up, expand the rod. Now you may be wondering, how do I know what my specifications are for deflection of drive belt and pounds of force to cause a deflection? Simple. I know how I know it. <laughs> I checked the manual. Call up Woodmarser, call up your company, whoever it is. Once you find out what that number is, don't remember it. Take a Sharpie. I know it's your favorite sawmill. Take a Sharpie. Write it on the sawmill. So my mill, to be properly tensioned, the dry belt needs to be 14 pounds of, def 14 pounds of force and cause 3 eighths of an inch of deflection. You know, each mill is going to be different. An LT40 is going to be different than an LT70. It's got a lot to do with the width of the drive belt and a lot of the geometry. But anyway, as you've heard me say, people put labels on everything. Look, label, label, label. Labels everywhere. Labels that mean nothing. Caution. Don't do something stupid. This label means something. Write it on your sawmill. Typically though, on any kind of sawmill, when you do an adjustment on your tri belt, you're gonna have to double check your brake. So some people may even wonder why I spend time getting my sawmill adjusted. It really doesn't take that much time, but what it gets you is incredibly flat, smooth, almost plain wood. Yeah, you can go out there and you can saw and whittle on a piece and have it look like it got drugged down a gravel road. Or you can put a little effort, and I'm not talking a lot of effort, a little effort into making sure you have your adjustments correctly. You don't really have to do them all at one time. You just check them as you go by. Try this, do this, whatever, occasionally. And uh, just keep things lined up. Typically, once a sawmill is in adjustment, it doesn't come out of adjustment unless you crash it or do something. But this is what you get. Look at how flat this wood is. I mean, it almost looks like it's been plain. Almost no teeth marks. I mean, you could sand that and you would be almost perfectly finished. This is what a sawmill is supposed to cut like. I'll just keep coming in closer and closer. Look. 
very few ridges, very few marks. It's just beautiful wood. Are we done? Yeah, we're done. We're done. Chip, are we done? Chip? What? I'm done. He's done. <laughs> when he climbs up in the forklift with Martha, we're done. We're done. Lucy, are you done? <laughs> are you done, Lucy? Come here. Lucy, are you done? Oh, I'm so done. It's hard work out here laying around all day. Come on, Jib. Come on, Jib. Come on, Jib. <laughs> Thanks for visiting our sawmill. Click on the links above to see more of our videos.